In this next section, we're looking at using hypothesis tests to compare um, two different parameters. So for this first example, we've got a claim involving two different proportions. Um, so we have uh, two samples or two populations that we're looking at, and we're comparing the proportions between the two. Um, so in a randomized trial in Kenya, 352 infants were given bed nets to keep out mosquitoes, and 287 were not. So these are two different samples that are randomly assigned, so they're independent, simple random samples. And of those infants that did have bed, bed nets, 15 out of the 352 developed malaria. And of those without bed nets, um, 26 developed malaria. So we're looking at two different, in this case, proportions. We have the proportion um, of infants with bed nets, I'll call that P1, which was uh, 15 out of 352. And this is a sample proportion, so I'll count the P hat one. Um, so this is the proportion of infants that got malaria from those that had bed nets. And this comes out to about 0 0.04 three or so. Um, so that's about 4.3 percent. And then for the second population, those that did not have bed nets, um, we got 26 out of 287 developed malaria. And this comes out to 0 0.091 or about 9.1 percent. So just looking at these two numbers, we can see that the proportion that got malaria without the bed nets is higher, which is sort of what we would expect. The idea here is that um, having the bed nets would prevent uh, the babies from getting malaria. But it's certainly possible that this difference could just be uh, based on chance. Even if they had given bed nets to both populations of babies, there would likely still be some difference between the sample proportions. So what we're going to do here is, is look at a claim, and in this case we can think about what would the claim be, and in most of the problems you look at, the claim will already be stated. Um, but we can say, okay, if we were doing this trial, what is the question we are trying to answer? So I would say here that the claim is that um, babies with bed nets have a lower rate of malaria. Or if I state this um, in terms of our variables, we would say that P1, the proportion of babies with the bed nets with malaria, is less than P2. So this is our original claim, um, just like we had with the regular hypothesis tests. It's just that instead of looking at one proportion, we're comparing two proportions. Just like with the other hypothesis tests, our null hypothesis is going to be the version of this that has an equal sign. So in this case, that would be P1 equals P2. And then H1, in this case, would be P1 less than P2, since our original claim does not have an equal sign in it. Now, the test statistic when you're dealing with two proportions looks like this. It's a little bit longer than the test statistic we looked before, looked at before, um, but it has a similar form. This is still a z-score um, for the proportions uh, example. But we're dealing now with um, both the little p's and the little p hats, right? The, uh, these p1 and p2 over here would be the population proportions um, for each population. And then over here we have the sample proportion. And then instead of just having um, one piece on the bottom here, we have what's called the pooled sample proportion, which is sort of taking everything together. In this case, this would be um, all of the babies that got malaria, which was 15 from the first set and 26 from the second, out of all of the total um, babies. So we're sort of pooling them all together to be, get that P bar with the straight line over it. Um, but in any case, you don't really need to compute this test statistic directly, because in this um, section, I just assume that you uh, use the calculator for these. So this is going to be very similar to what we did before. We're going to go into the stat menu over towards tests. And then in this case, we're going to pick the two proportion Z test. Um, they'll ask for X1, N1, X2, N2. This is just like the X and N from our regular hypothesis tests. We just have two of them. So in this case, this was 
15 out of 352 and then 26 out of 287. And then just like before we have to um, pick whichever our uh, alternative hypothesis was, which in this case our alternative hypothesis was that P1 was less than P2. So we'll say P1 less than P2, that would be the middle option. And then we do calculate, and here we go. So this first Z, this is our test statistic. This is what we would have gotten if we had um, computed that big formula up, up uh, before. And then we've got our p-value. This is really what we're interested in. So our p-value in this case is 0 0.00691 and some more decimal places. This is a very small p-value, right? If we're thinking of this as a percentage, this is less than 1%. Um, so really with any of our normal uh, significance levels, um, remember, typically we're dealing with 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. Um, this would be less than any of those. So in this case, we, we would really want to reject H0, which means that there is sufficient evidence to say that, yes, the babies that have the bed nets, that was P1, um, have a lower rate of malaria than those babies that did not. I would again encourage you to read the book um, and in particular pay attention to what the requirements are in order to be able to do this process. Um, it's important that we have simple uh, randomly chosen independent samples that we're not um, you know, choosing our two samples in, in such a way that they're not independent from one another, otherwise this process doesn't work. And um, just like with before, for proportions, we have to have at least five uh, successes and failures, or in, in the context of this last question, that would mean in each of those samples, there have to be at least five babies that had malaria and at least five that did not. So if we had a, a sample of 300 babies and only one contracted malaria, that's too small um, to, be, to be able to use this process. We can also do the same process for looking at two different means. Um, now here we're looking at two independent simple random samples, just like with the proportions. Um, we've got two populations that are either normal or the sample size is bigger than 30. And again, these are um, pretty much the same conditions that we had for uh, our original hypothesis tests. And then we're just going to go ahead and assume that the two population standard deviations are not known. Um, we talked about a little bit about this before. If they are known, we can use a different formula. But it's very unusual that we would know the population standard deviations. And I put a little note in here. Um, if for whatever reason we know that this two, the two population standard deviations are the same, that they're equal, then we can use what are called pooled samples. Um, and your book goes into a little more detail about this. When we look at the calculator test, you'll see where that pooled option is. Um, you don't want to do this unless it explicitly says in the problem that we're going to assume that the population standard deviations are the same. If not, we'll just say, okay, maybe they're not the same, maybe they are, we don't know, and uh, continue assuming that they might not be. So on, our, on the calculator, we're going to be using this test called two-sample t-test. So here's a quick example. We're doing a study about testing in online courses. Um, and this is looking at, in the online course, is there any difference in test scores between proctored exams and non-proctored exams? So we naturally have two um, populations, and I'm assuming that these, po these samples were chosen randomly. Um, so we have randomly assigned students into two groups. Uh, here we have the sample sizes for each one and the mean test score for each uh, type or each group and the standard deviation for each group. So we're going to use, uh, in this case, a 0 0.01 significance level um, to do a hypothesis, a hypothesis test to see if unproctored exams have higher scores. Um, so if we say that the proctored exams is population 1 and the non-proctored exams is population 2, this claim would be saying that the unproctored exams, so that would be population 2, um, has a higher 
score on average. So that means that the mean one, mu one, is in fact lower than mu two. Right? So this means that people who have their exams proctored um, do worse or have a lower score than those that are non-proctored. So we'll do this on the calculator. So I'm going into my stat tests. I'm going to choose that two sample t test. And you'll notice there's two options here. We can either input the data um, into list one and list two, but in this case we don't have data, we have the actual statistics about the sample. So I'm gonna go over to statistics instead. And it asks me for um, the mean of the first population. So that was 74.3. And then the standard deviation of the first population and the size of the first sample, which I said was 30, and then the same things for the second population. All right, and then this next line here says mu1, and here's where we put in al our alternative hypothesis. This one in this case was mu1 less than mu2, so that is this option that's highlighted. Okay, and then, so here's this option to say pooled. Um, and again, we're just gonna say no on this unless there's some reason why we can assume the population standard deviations are the same. So then we calculate. Here this T, this is our uh, test statistic, and then here's our p-value. Again, this p-value is quite small. Um, for our 0 0.01 significance level, this is still um, quite a bit smaller than it. So we would reject H0, um, which means that our claim, in fact, does seem to be true. So there is evidence to, to indicate that according to this data, um, students that had non-proctored exams did better, um, which would indicate that you're, there's probably some cheating on the non-proctored exams um, if all, all the other things are equal. You'll notice that in both of the examples I mentioned that we have to have independent samples. Now there are some cases where we have studies um, involving dependent or paired samples. So for example, if we wanted to compare a person's reported height, how tall they say they are, versus their measured height, this is two um, sort of groups of numbers, but they're not independent. Uh, a person's re reported height is linked to their actual height, even though those, those quantities could be different. Another example would be um, before and after results for some sort of um, study. So for example, if people go on a diet and we want to look at their um, weight before and after. That's sort of naturally paired uh, sample data rather than being two totally separate um, samples. And in order to analyze this type of data, we do a very different process. Um, and there is a section on this in the book if you're curious, but we shouldn't have to do any of these problems um, in our assignments. I just wanted to mention that this is kind of a different, uh, different component. Okay, so here's a problem for you to try. Um, this is looking at pizza delivery times for two different companies. And in this case, uh, it's giving us the data for both of these. Um, so the first thing that I would do is to go into your calculator, enter the data in um, the list options, um, and you can do, just do this one at a time and figure out what is the mean and standard deviation for each of these little data sets. And then you can use that to do your hypothesis tests. So some of the homework problems, they just give you the, the statistics and some of the homework problems, you, you have to actually compute them yourself. But you definitely can just do that with the calculator instead of finding mean and standard deviation by hand. That's it for this video. See you next time.